I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R720 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on RAID. Hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R720 server. Do us a favor, find things video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. This video is going to be focused on RAID. So we're going to go over a couple things. We're going to uh, show you the different types of RAID that you can use for uh, R720. And we're going to uh, put up a little chart and compare them as far as uh, the different RAID levels you can get, the cache uh, between them, the different speeds, the PCIe version, all that good stuff. Uh, then we're going to actually show you how to install the RAID, uh, both the mini mono and a PCIe version. And then we're going to show you how to configure uh, RAID, and we'll end up doing RAID 5, uh, RAID 5 with the H310. So let's just go ahead and hop on in, um, and we'll go ahead and we'll cover the different types of RAID. All right, so let's start by going over the different RAID options. So we have all the hardware ones featured here. Well, I shouldn't say all, but the heart of the hardware ones featured here. Uh, the difference that you'll notice is these up here are mini monos, and this is a PCIe card. Uh, both work just great. I personally prefer the mini monos because there is a spot in the R720 dedicated for it, whereas with this one you have to use one of your PCIe slots, and I like to use those for different things, so uh, personally I'm a, a big fan of the mini monos, but both work great, and we'll show you how to install both of them uh, coming up here in a second. Okay, So let's start with uh, the first RAID option, which is not featured here, which is the S110. This is an onboard software, so of course it would not be featured since it is a uh, software RAID. Uh, it has RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, and 10. There's no cache, of course, and there are drive speeds of 3 gigabit per second for SATA, 6 gigabit per second on SAS. It is a PCIe Gen 2.0. The next is featured right here, a uh, very great option for storage. It is the H310. The H310 has RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 10, and 50. There's no cache, as you can see right here, compared to the uh, other options. And there are drive speeds of uh, 3 gigabit per second on SATA and 6 gigabit per second on SAS. It is also PCIe Gen 2.0 and this is the first hardware RAID option that we're featuring. The next is the H710. The H710 has RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, and 60. So basically the addition of the 6 and 60 are the big difference and it has cache on it and the cache is 5, 12 megabytes. It is the same speeds and also PCIe 2.0 and of course it is a hardware rate as well. The next one on the list is the H710P. The H710P is the exact same for the most part as the H710 except for it has more cache. So it's going to be RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, and 60, 1 gigabyte on the cache, same speeds, PCIe 2.0, and hardware rate, of course. The next one up is the first um, of our uh, PCIe's to show you is the H810. And I, and I should note, you can actually get uh, PCIe's of these other options, but this is the only way for the H810 is via PCIe. There are no mini monos for the H810. So the H810 is 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, and 60 for the RAID levels. One gigabyte of cache, three gigabit per second on SATA, six gigabit per second on SAS, PCIe 2.0 for the gen, and hardware RAID. So basically the exact same um, as the H710P as far as the, um, the, the heart of the specs is just going to be your PCIe version. Okay, um, So these are the different choices. So now we're going to show you how to install them and then we'll show you how to configure RAID 5. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and install the H310 and the H810 so that we can do one of the mini monos and the PCIe. So pop your latch, remove the top. So with H310, um, we're gonna remove the air baffle. So I just wanna pull the air baffle up. Um, I'm gonna remove the riser just to have a little better access as well. So we're just gonna to pull the riser up. And then we're gonna go ahead and install our H310. So uh, with the H310, uh, you'll notice that there's the connector on the bottom, which is going to connect over here. Um, so essentially what you're going to do is you're going to take this part of the PCB board, and over here there's two little clips. I don't really want to call them clips, but there's kind of a little bit higher up where you're going to come in and you're just going to kind of slide this under. So they're under those two little black 
uh, clips and then we're going to come straight down and when you do you have two little openings over here uh, for the little plastic pieces which are notorious for breaking off so if yours are broken don't worry about it um, and then just push the two blue circles down and you've officially installed your H310. All right, so now we are going to do the PCIe version, which is going to be the H810. So this one that we have here is high profile. With the R720, there are three low profile and there are uh, four high profile. So really, you should be fine with whichever brackets you get. Um, I like to come over here to riser three in the back. Uh, there's just a lot of space to work in. Um, so it's personally where I like to install it. Um, so what I'm going to do here is take the blue clip out to start. So you just pull this straight up. And then we're going to remove the bottom bracket down here. Okay, so we're going to pop this bad boy out to clear space. And then what we're going to do is just come and line everything up down here. So it's just a matter of uh, getting the uh, the leads in and getting the clip over here in, uh, which is a little bit of a tight squeeze, but nothing too crazy to do. And then once you get it, you're just going to pop it in firmly. And you're going to take the blue clip, push it back down to secure it in, and you've officially installed the PCIe version. So now what we'll go ahead and do is we're going to set up a RAID 5 on our H310. Hey guys, this has been with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up RAID 5 on your server. RAID 5 is going to require a minimum of three drives, but you're not limited to three drives. If you want to use more than three drives, you're more than welcome to. For this video specifically, we're going to go ahead and use three drives. The other thing I want to bring up is that it is recommended that your drives be the same capacity. This isn't required, but having different capacities can result in space that you're unable to use. So the first thing we want to do is boot up our server. And during post, you want to wait for a message to pop up on the screen. You see right here where it says Control R. We want to press Control R. And this will bring us to the disk management utility. So once we're in here, you can see that it shows our RAID controller, the Perk H310 Mini. And it says that no configuration is present. So we want to go ahead and create a RAID configuration. So the first thing we want to do is we want to scroll up and select that um, H310 mini. And you want to press F2 on it. And that will bring up this menu right here. Go to the bottom of that menu and click convert to RAID capable. On here it will show our three drives that we have installed. So we want to go ahead and select those three drives. And after we do that click OK. Now we can see that our drives have appeared underneath we want to go ahead and scroll up to where it says no configuration present and press F2 again. It will bring up this menu right here and we want to click create new VD which stands for virtual disk. Once we do that we will be faced with this menu right here where we can select the RAID level so we are going to do RAID 5. And then here we want to select all three of our drives. Like I said if we don't have a minimum of three drives RAID 5 will not work. And we can give this a name, so I'm just going to do something simple like RAID 5 Array, but this can be whatever you want it to be. And then after we do that, we can go ahead and click on OK. And then we want to click OK again. And now what we want to do is that we want to initialize our RAID 5 Array. So we press F2 on our Array. We'll bring up this menu right here. We want to click on Initialization and then Fast Init. And then we just want to select yes. Do note that this will destroy the data that's on those disks. So make sure that the disk you're using does not have any valuable data on it. Or if it does have data, just make sure that's data you don't mind losing. Anyways, that's how you set up a RAID 5 array onto your server. As you can see, it's not too bad. It's fairly simple. And if you just follow the steps that I showed you in this video, you'll have no problem doing it. And these steps apply to other RAID levels. Um, as you saw earlier, you could see that you could select RAID 0 and RAID 1. These are going to have different disk requirements, so if you are interested in setting up a different RAID level, I do recommend that you do research the benefits to the RAID level that you are interested in possibly using, and also the best use cases for those RAID levels. If you found anything in this video useful today, 
go ahead and click that like and smash the subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. And if you're interested in purchasing a custom built server, we have plenty of servers in stock. So go ahead and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Thank you for stopping by.